G'day, it's Adam Moore of VK4GHZ. This is part three in a series of videos looking at my Nexion HMI project for a K3NG rotator controller project. In this video, we're gonna introduce moon and sun tracking, and we're also gonna go over some things I should have mentioned in the previous videos, uh, help screens, and also your elevation calibration. So stick around. Okay, so let's add moon tracking. So what we need to do is just remove that. Um, now for any tracking, you need to have the elevation control enabled, for obvious reasons. So we will compile that and upload that to the Teensy. Okay, so we've got the moon feature enabled. And on the bottom row here, we can see an icon for the moon. Now if that was dulled out, that would mean moon tracking is enabled, but the moon isn't currently visible. Be aware of the time as displayed on the screen. Now I've enabled GPS synchronization, but I don't have any real time clock keeping um, at the moment, which would be a great feature for the, uh, for the Teensy. Hey goody, <laughs> hint hint. So you may need to wait a bit from when you first powered up for the, uh, the time to be accurate if you're using GPS for it to synchronize. Now with the correct time of day, we can see the moon icon is uh, fully lit up. It's not dulled back, so it tells us the moon is visible. And a new page becomes available. This is the moon and sun tracking page. Up the top here, we've got our current azimuth and elevation of our rotors. There's a moon track activate button. That will become fairly obvious. We also have, uh, we can also access our preset positions. We have a stop and parking button. Here we've got the azimuth and elevation of the moon. Now if we press the moon track activate button, the obvious happens. You can see in the top status row the VSS1 message tells us where the rotors are heading to. I'm just going to manually stop that. So at the moment the linear actuator is just sitting here on the floor and the ADXL345 elevation sensor is just sitting on the breadboard here so there's no, there's no feedback. The, 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 the linear actuator is actually moving. So before it extends too much, I'll just manually stop it. Now when moon tracking is activated, you'll notice the icon change here. That's true for all these other pages, like so. So it's reached our correct azimuth, but it's still going up because it's not getting any feedback from the linear actuator. I'll just manually adjust my ADXL345 on the breadboard, like so. Now if we have a look at the HMI for this page, you can see on the start button it's got a touch press event that will, that will uh, manually send a stop to the MCU. It also changes a, a, a tracking flag. The park button has a touch release event which does much the same thing. That is also, tr that is also true on the gauges page, we can see there's a touch press event here on all of these that if the tracking is enabled, it will send a stop event, then it will actually send the function and change the flags. Also on the main page, any of these will, will cancel the tracking. So if you're going to customize the HMI, just be aware of that. Now, unlike microcontroller code, which is all in front of you, uh, a touchscreen object can have many parameters. So you can have a touch press event, a touch release event. Pages can have pre-initialize, post-initialize events, and you can also have timer events running in the background. So you really do need to know uh, what you're doing if you're going to further customize my HMI. So there's a, a, quite a few traps there just to be aware of. All right, so what we'll do now is add the sun tracking feature. So we'll just remove that to enable it. We will compile the code, recompile the code and upload it to our microcontroller. And we have got some tracking feature enabled. And with that enabled, that appears on the combined moon and sun tracking page, like so. Now the icons and functionality are much the same as the moon tracking. Sun tracking activate button does what you'd expect. Activates the tracking. The VSS one line will indicate what the rotors are doing. And we can, uh, the icon changes. Now that's also true for all these other pages. We can see we've got tracking status with the sun. 
and any of these buttons will cancel the tracking and you'll notice the icon has changed. So that's Moon and Sun Tracking. Now a new feature I've added today, the 18th of October 2020, is a new page. On the About screen there's a new button called View Features. What this does, this just gives you an overview of all the features you've enabled. This information does briefly appear on the splash screen, but this um, if you don't have time to, to actually absorb all of that, this is here on this new page called Features. So just to review the features I have currently set at the moment, We've got the clock enabled with GPS time synchronization, elevation control. We have park enabled. These are my uh, park bearings, 140 degrees azimuth, zero degrees elevation. The auto park feature is enabled, but auto park uh, is off, if that makes sense. So whenever it's uh, zero, it will be off. This is our GPS. We're receiving seven satellites and these are my coordinates. We have moon and sun tracking activated. Touch return and that will take you back to the about page. Now one thing I should have mentioned in the part one video were the help screens. There are context sensitive help screens available. So whenever you see some text with a question mark, you can touch that and a help screen will appear describing what that actually does. So for instance, um, show diagnostics shows or hides debug information. When selected, small red debug info appears on the main pages and the diagnostic page becomes available. Uh, update rate determines how often screen information updates. Azimuth and elevation readings, etc. can be updated every 100 to 1000 milliseconds, selectable in 100 millisecond steps, like so. One thing I should have mentioned in the part two video when we introduced elevation was the rotor calibration. So if we just take a quick look at the um, make sure you enable the show more calibration page and we take a look at that page you'll see extra functionality here where you can not only calibrate your azimuth end stops but also your up and down end stops as well. Now your, your, your full up position might be 90 degrees in, in my case where I'm using a linear actuator or if you're using say a Yaesu G5500 uh, system you'd have the full 180 degrees of elevation control so you would manually rotate that to zero at your horizon press full down then it's a long press of the set button to set that you would then manually send your rotor to the full up position whether that's 90 or 180 degrees touch full up then a long press of the set button to set that now once your end stops are set whether that's azimuth or elevation you can then manually set a calibration value in. So for instance, my ADXL345 just sitting on the breadboard there is floating around the 14 degree mark. So I say, I want to say, no, no, that's zero degrees, that's a horizon. I'd select elevation, touch the blue box, we'd enter in a value, zero, and it's a long press of manually calibrate, like so. And now it's been set to zero degrees, which of course flows through to the other pages like so. So that's how you manually set your calibration for azimuth and elevation. To download my Nexion firmware, always go to vk4ghz.com for the latest version. If you see my firmware posted elsewhere, it could be an obsolete version, so just be aware of that. vk4ghz.com, click on downloads, and click on the obvious, the K4GHZ K3NG rotator controller system that will take you to the official project page. Scroll down. There's schematics there for the main board and remote board and uh, PCB overlays. And here you'll see the Nexion firmware available. In the next video, we're going to take a look at satellite tracking. This is pretty cool stuff. So make sure you like and subscribe to my videos and we'll see you then.